Welcome back for today's tutorial, which is on a question that I receive very often online on how do I utilize dodge and burn in Photoshop. Here in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you two different photos. One is a more scenic photo, whereas the other photo is a portrait photo to give you an idea on those two different types of genres and how I go about utilizing the dodge and burn tool. So we're gonna start with our scenic photo first. So we already have our dodge tool that's on, but we actually want to switch it to the burn tool. And so we'll click on burn, and now our options up here change. So what I want to do is actually increase my brush a little bit. We'll go to about a thousand. And for this photo, I want the mid-tone selected. And what I like to have my exposure on is about between five and 15%. I generally don't have to go higher than that. It gives me enough of an effect to where it really shows up on my image as I'm going about editing. So what I want to do is just highlight over my cloud areas because we want them to look a, a little bit more aggressive. And so we just wanna darken them a little bit make them look like it's a, a, a big storm coming or something. So just add that dynamic element to our photo. So we'll actually change our brush size to get into some of the smaller areas, get down in here. And you can see it's really starting to look a lot more aggressive. And so we'll just go through that. So I'll actually speed up this part and show you all at the end what we have. <music> Okay, and there we have it in utilizing the burn tool. So you can go over it as however often you want or make it look how dramatic you choose for that specific photo. That's just the way that I wanted it to look. Didn't wanna go too far, but you know, it just made the photo look a little bit more aggressive. Now, say I wanted to also utilize the dodge tool and wanted to brighten up some of the, the parts on the, the perimeter of the photo along the edges. So I'll switch to dodge and I'll actually go up here and go back to mid tones. And so for this one, we'll actually do about maybe 7%. We don't want to go too far and increase our brush size a bit. We'll go to 900, okay? And so we'll just do the same thing on this outer perimeter. You know, kind of bring in some of our, our edges there. And that's it. Now, one thing to note with the dodge tool is because you're increasing the brightness of something, you have to be a little bit more cognizant when you're utilizing the dodge tool because you don't wanna go too far and present a lot more noise in the photo. So that's the only thing with the dodge tool. You have to be a little bit more mindful when you're utilizing that one, as opposed to the burn tool, because with the burn, you're actually darkening. So you're not worrying too much with noise being presented in the photo. Now with our more portrait or street photo, I generally am focused on the opposite for those, utilizing the dodge tool more as opposed to the burn tool. So since we still have that selected, in this particular photo, what's my focus? It's the guy here as well as the smoke that's behind him. So we want to exaggerate that a little bit. We really want those th two things to really stand out in our photo. So what I want to do while we still have the dodge tool selected, I'm gonna come up here and change my exposure. And we're gonna do 4% this time. And I'm actually going to change the brush size to about 600. And we're going to come in here and we just want to hover over his face. We just wanna bring out his face ever so slightly and a little bit on his upper body. And there we go. So next, I also want to bring out a little bit in the clouds here or the smoke that's behind him. So what I want to do is switch the range over to the highlights. And so I just wanna bring that in ever so slightly here. You know, add a little bit more lift into our smoke that's there. And again, you want to be a little bit more mindful about what you're doing when you're utilizing the dodge tool because you don't want to go too far because then it, it just starts looking a little bit too messy when you're using the dodge tool. 
And so we just want to go over it a little bit and then might switch over to the mid tones come in here get those little darker areas come in there okay and so that that's it that's how i utilize dodge and burn for my photos from if i'm doing a portrait or street scene versus using it for a more scenic landscape type of photo so try this out for your photos and utilizing dodge and burn and see what you can create. Hopefully this video is helpful for you. And as always, until next time, I'll see you all in the next video.